thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. Just a quick warning of this one, although I've gone through the process of making this, at the end I actually haven't got this working. You can see it's assembled, but it's not actually quite working. So please be aware if you follow everything in the guide, hopefully it's not wrong, it's just some little issue, debugging issue, but maybe I have made it wrong. So just be, be, be aware of that. And I advise you to check in the comments and description before you start in case I've posted an errata. Have fun. Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the back office. Let's begin. I have a kit here, a kit from Dean or Lesso Leal 70. Lesso Leal 70? I, Dean, sorry, I, I, I just have not learned how to pronounce this and I think we've known each other a while. I still haven't. Dean is easier for me, but if you want to find him and his amazing workings, go to Twitter and put that there. And he, uh, likes to do a lot of 8-bit tinkering and he's way more, way, way, way uh, better than I am at any of that sort of stuff in, in being very tenacious in trying to fix this ancient breaking hardware. So he's given me this kit, it's a radio kit, and I'll just tell you what it says on the packet. It's a 051050. Uh, let's zoom in, we have zoom technology 051050 A065-03-06. So could that be a date code? Who knows? But it is a scanning radio kit, the types of which you could sort of buy, the radios rather than the kits, the, the, the radios that you can sort of buy for pennies. But look, that's cute, isn't it? It's got a nice case. It's actually quite a good case, to be honest with you. It's pretty rigid. It's certainly uh, better than most sort of scanning radios you'll find in a sort of Christmas cracker. Headphones? Yeah. Okay. Let's put these aside, though. I suspect we're not going to need those for quite some time because of course we have to put it together and I have noticed something and you might have noticed too zero instructions however ooh, I'm just sort of just checking the bag making sure it's everything's out of there however have a looksy looksy loo there the component tapes seem to have component IDs on the back which is something a little bit of a rarity in uh, my experience Let's just dig, have a little dig about here. Dig about, dig about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's find some twizzers. Put the soldering iron on in anticipation. Look, we've even got the whole battery snap mechanism. This is cool. This is a, a very neat looking thing. What's that knob for? Could it be volume? I think it must be volume because it shouldn't be tuning. Yeah. So the knob even goes on there. Look at that. It's not bad. Right, so first things first. First, there's the back of the PCB and a bunch of surface mounty stuff. It does need a big IC. I'm hoping this will be the IC because I can't see an IC elsewhere. No, I can see the IC actually, look. It's stuck itself in there. Good. So these component tapes, you'll notice, do have values on them. So there's your 104, so that's cute. Sorry about that jump cut, but that was uh, rather convenient. Someone is just dropping off something. That's made my whole day worth worth having. Actually, that sounds really glib, doesn't it? it? Makes your day worth having. Don't top yourself today. It'll make your day worth having. Right, so I'm just gonna, I think just begin. And I'm gonna begin with this fiddly little guy here because it's gonna be one of the more trickier components we have. And it's, I say that, it probably isn't in reality because of course the, the small passives usually are, are a bit trickier. And do I want to use soldering wire? Or maybe we'll try a bit of solder paste today. I'm just going to go with the first leg, though, because I've got the solder wire in my hand. So I'm just going to tack that on here. And it's, it's kind of interesting how it's so offset from the IC. I don't know if they've done that on purpose to sort of help you out. In fact, it's really hard to get this wrong. No matter how much sideways movement you have on this IC, it's pretty much going to be doable. Its pins are just going to align. Apart from maybe if you've just done what I've done there and put it all totally skew with. I have put this little envelope down to give you a bit of contrast, but uh, it's acting as a bit of an ice rink. There we go. So that's a, a good start for uh, that component right there. You can see it there, pretty good. So I'm just going to tack the other end. No, I hate, I need sunglasses here. I'm sort of staring through the glare of this white piece of paper. But just to show you this now. So this is solder um, 
paste as it comes in a tube, which is meant to be used with a sort of applicator that sort of, I think it's basically hydraulic or pneumatic, and it sort of has a piston that pushes in here and ejects solder paste from this end. I don't have one of those. So I'm probably gonna be using this Rolson screwdriver. That's gonna be it for me. So that's gonna be my level of control. I might give up if my finger starts bleeding from the pressure, but let's have a look. Normally the first squeeze though is full of See, it's that kind of difficult. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I really ought to sort something out with this because you, you need quite a lot of pressure. So you can imagine something like that is really digging into your hand. But I'm just gonna apply some across here and we'll see how it goes. Oh, no. Right, so that's that's the first kind of bit where it's it's sort of got, it's got a flux built in to keep it lubricated and the flux has separated from the solder paste and it's all a mess. But don't worry, let's just see how it actually um, solders once we, heat it up. So I'm just going to run the soldering on basically along the edge. There you go, see? It's not nothing complicated and actually all of those have soldered up nicely. I'm just sort of catching, I'm moving the, the iron around just to catch any uh, unused beads really, just to get a bit more solder on there, but that's okay, that worked out all right. Now the other side I can see is mainly flux, so we might have to have another go at this, but I'm just going to do the same. Just cook it all up bit of dirt from my soldering and actually clean that but yeah that's quite good it's all just swimming in a sea of flux so what I might do after I build this circuit because there could be some solder flux under there I'm gonna give it a good old wash or maybe just blast it with the hot air ah oh, you muppet I was so <laughs> okay so what I've done there that's fine but I'll tell you what what's happened yeah, I've heated the whole component basically to the point where it's molten. The, the solder on both sides is molten and then the, the component itself has lifted. And that in itself is not really a problem, but it, just to show you, that's that's like when you're using a hot air or reflow, you're used to that, but I, it kind of jumped, jumped up on me there with the soldering iron. I might actually just do that again. <laughs> so all you do, clean it all off, yeah? And also you can see that's the benefit of having quite a lot of flux. You see how it so evenly heats everything. That's the flux carrying that heat right there. Yeah. So pop that component back on. God, it is really soaking in flux. Just going to do it with me fingers. Me fingers. Plop it back down. I'm just actually going to do it by hand here. Let's try. That was hot. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it just goes to show you, like, you know, I'm doing it by hand. I'm sorry, you know, if it's a bit cl I'm not clear. But you don't have to w worry about these things. It's not, it's not rocket science. It's not playing Kerbal. If it doesn't work first time, you just have another go and you're done. Look at that. That was just not even a problem. Uh, it looks quite nice. It's, it's fine. Absolutely fine. Right. We've got all these billions of other surface mount uh, components now though, so just going to quickly try to identify some. So you've got these capacitors C13, C12, C11. I think there must be some sort of instructions one can get for this because although all the basic stuff is identifiable, these capacitors, there's, there's, there's lots of different values here. Yeah, doing some research on the kit. Apparently it's the HX3207 FM Frequency Modulation Micro SMD Radio Kit. And it's 1.8 volts to 3.5 volts. Mm. But you will notice that in all of the images, there's nothing, it doesn't say anything in the in, uh, the kit uh, description about having any instructions. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more research. Back to this bloody thing then. This is the day after, by the way, and I've got a little tart for energy. Um, went on the internet, I found this. It's actually from a website in Russia, and it appears, and I'll zoom in, just in case you're at home and you need a copy, <laughs> um, to show the value. So you have C6 here, 
332, C7181. So there's a few values for things, but not everything. So I'm still going to have to work it out. But I'm going to start by putting some of these passives down. Can't decide whether or not to finish this before starting or have a sip of a cup. Ah! Sure. Ah, let's just start. Mmm. That was one massive bite, that was. Right. Get rid of these crumbs. <clears throat> so according to the diagram here, there's an L1, which looks like that, and then a C16, which is there, and that should be a 104. So there's our 104s. Now I have had a quick look through that printout and there does seem to be some values of things that I don't appear to have so that's slightly worrying but I think we'll just build it as much as we can really and then figure out the rest later. So I've got my squirter here and I've shoved in the end a Prit stick because that other thing was sort of caning my hand. Just to show, so I'm going to show you now what I'm going to do. So just, oh it's all flux. Give it, I'm giving it, giving it a squirt off camera to get it all flowing properly. I'm going to wipe that lump of flux off. We saw what happens when you have too much flux. And then put one blob and one blob. See those two little blobs there? You can plop that on there, right there. And you can see it's sort of swimming, swimming in that. So if you had a hot air blower on that now though, that, that, that would sort of improve this process. But I'm just going to show it to you manually, just using a soldering iron. And um, you'll see there's a sort of surface tension that sort of sticks the component to the pads properly. It sort of does orient it right, rightly, rightly so lad, um, if you just heat it up and then that's it. It's, it's quite painless really. It is, it is a lot easier to use paste, to be fair, if you know what you're doing with it. And um, I'm just going to have a quick look through to see there are um, four 104s. And what you can do, I'll just do the little trick here. If you know there's a bunch of similar components, for example, so there's going to be another 104 here. And where else, where else? I'm sort of scanning the diagram off the sort of screen here. And there's another 104 here, this C2. I'm not very impressed though with this silk screen. They've got, a lot, see these here? There's a couple of components really near to each other. So you know the solder's gonna flow from one to the other, which is not great. 104. Ah yes, and then one more here. So when you're doing this though, this is a really good candidate for hot air because you can just heat the whole board up at once and you will, uh, it'll all just sort of jump into place. Now if you're ever doing this and you're trying to put the whole board together with solder paste, just be aware that if you, the longer you take, depending on the nature of your solder paste the, and the flux solvent in it, it can actually dry out and then that becomes kind of Pants. When you try to do it, it'll be, it's almost too dry to work. It's kind of annoying. Hard to describe, but you'll know it. So if you're doing it and you're going to do a bunch of boards, try to use the laser cut stencil if you've got one. Um, because that's probably the only way you're really going to be able to do it quick enough. Or just maybe just do one board at a time. Again, if you're trying to do a production of a few boards, that's going to be difficult too and less optimal. So it's, it's tricky. Uh, but yeah, just be aware of that you might be quicker off just doing them using traditional ways, a bit like how I'm doing it now. So there we go, that's that. What else? So that's our 104s all done. I'll chuck that in the bin. So we've got two 221s here. Again, just scanning the diagram off camera. You can probably scan it on camera. Two. Two one. So really, literally, I am just looking through here for a two two one. So we see a C five is a two two one and C three. So C five and C three. So when you hear me saying two two one or whatever, that's all I'm doing. I'm just trying to scout around for the part. So there's a C five here. And hmm. I see a C three here. It's a very odd looking thing, but it's because. Look what they've done here. And yeah, I, know, I know it's gonna be difficult at that level. What they've done is they've actually, again, not properly silkscreened that. 
So you've got this sort of three leg component there. And you've got this resistor here and they've all got the danger of merging to each other. It's, it's very odd actually, I've never seen that. And it's weird because they obviously have a um, solder resist layer on that side of the board, on the top here, you can see that. Just gonna get these components out. Right, plop those down. That one goes in like that. And that one goes in like that. So yeah, they've gone through the effort of making this PCB, but you think, why wouldn't they have just, just done that last little bit that makes it sensible? And I don't think they're really saving any money. So if I'm going to say there's a trick behind this, I'd say the trick is probably just to sort of heat both ends of the component early on like that, not worry about the alignment so much, and then go and go back and then just warm them up a bit and then the component should snap around to the orientation it should be. So that's pretty much the, the plan. I'm just going to go ahead and put together as many of the, put on all the sort of passives that I can and uh, we'll uh, review it in a moment um, after that bit because it's, I'm just going to repeat the same process, you don't really need to watch me do that. All the capacitors are down, it didn't take too long, very fortunately. So now I'm going to have to put down some resistors. So you can see these are just surface mount resistors done in exactly the same way. So R4 here is looking for a 5K5 value. So I'm going to expect it to be this one. So this one is marked 562. So it's not quite right, but if you think 562, what that means, take the first two numbers and then times them by 10 to the power of the third number, right? So 562 becomes 5600 ohms, and that's 5.6. So I think that's close enough for the 5.5. So I'm just gonna unwrap that, tap and unwrap. So the putting down the other components though is pretty quick. Uh, the only time really that just takes effort is really the uh, unwrapping part because it could just, sometimes you get catch the little lip of sealing tape and other times you don't but apart from that it's not a big deal so I'm just going to plop those down. I think I still, I think I prefer these to through hole though, I think it is definitely a lot quicker. I mean through hole does have the benefit that you can put a bunch of through hole parts in um, prior but I suppose you could do that with this too if you really want to but it's fine. If you've got a load of the same type it makes it certainly a bit easier. So let's just scan through. The next resistor is here, and that's a 1K2. So there we go. So this is a 122. So that's 1200, a 1.2K. And that's what a 1K2 is. So we'll plop that there. All individually wrapped these and all individually marked. So I'm going to give the uh, kit credit for that. Just a shame it's not on the silk screen. If they had the, the values on the silk screen, you could just wang ahead. I'm kind of more worried about some of the other little random parts, and I'm going to put one of those random parts there to show you. It's a sort of hand wired choke or inductor. Um, God knows how that all works out. It, they're all rated in a really they're rated in Henry's as well, so I've got no idea really about that. We've got at least three separate little uh, components like that um, and you'll identify those as these little coily type things um, yeah we'll have to probably do a little bit more digging though to figure out how they work and what their what their values are right we've got two more resistors to put down according to my pile of parts I'm hoping that's all the resistors come on camera come on camera wake up wake up <laughs> Um, the next one is here, down at the bottom, and that's a 154. Um, that's an interesting one. And then we've got 15K there. So the 15K is probably uh, this one. Or is it? Hang on. We have a 154 and we have a 153. So 153 is 15 and three zeros, so that is 15,000. That would be the that one for there. But then we have this one here, oddly, that's marked 154 on the uh, drawing, which would be 154 ohms. And I don't think this 154 
would be that unless maybe it is i don't know if the three digits if there's a bit with that would be um 150,000 wouldn't it if it if the four meant something in that so i don't know i might have to look that one up but i'm just going to go ahead though and place this one so i'm pretty sure that's the right value it might be i'll have to just look up the scale for these to see if they go to a different scale you know there's because you have three digit numbering and then you have four digits um they might only go up so high and then saying that that would make a whole mockery a whole mockery of the system potentially although what i could do for a bit of fun you could always try to get a multimeter on the end of one of these little components Sometimes though, if you're stuck and you're looking around your PCB and you know you're worried about the value, just see if there's another you know resistor footprint on the board. Because sometimes, if you're pretty sure there's no other resistor to put down, and you've used up all the other parts and you're sure they're all in the right place, then maybe it is just the right part or it's a substitution. More often than not it is. I mean, they're not going to put a part in the kit that's totally, totally random. So let's take this one, which is marked 10, sorry, 154, and uh, we'll just have a go at buzzing it out, really. I suspect it is that R2. Um, I don't see, just casually glancing around, I don't see any more resistor footprints. Um, Although I do see some marked with L's, which are kind of inductors, which is sort of a little bit worrying. I'm not sure if I've got those. So here's the 154 part right there. Get the multimeter. I'm going to set that to the ohms range. You might just see it in the screen or just keep it right there. Uh, uh. I'm going to just try to get it off the tweezers. The tweezers are a bit sticky with all the flux. And that is indeed 150k. So 154 is 150k. So I'm going to leave that there and just have a quick look here in this diagram. So that's the 154, which is R2 down here. But let's see what it's marked on this schematic. So they do have a schematic here. R2 is 154. So is there any that uses 150K? I'm just looking to see if there is 150K anywhere. So R1 is an interesting value. They've got it marked here. So no, that's 15k. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And let's see what R4 actually does. Is that it there? R4. Am, I, am I losing my mind? It's R2, not R4. Sorry. <laughs> let's just have a quick look through the circuit. So if you could, if you look at the circuit, sometimes you can see there. There's R2. weird it's part of this it is a it is a circuit here that I don't think you want to mess with because it's controlling the power that's going into the base here um, from the collector from this V4 I think if you mess with that and it's the wrong value you could have a problem so I might just look through my pile of resistors in a bit and we'll find we'll find a probably a better value for that but I'm gonna keep that here safely I just don't want to lose that. I just want to sort of crack on, really. So, what else do we have? We have this interesting part here, which is a BB910, which I think is this um, goes in this footprint next to C8, but it's not marked. Yes, yeah, so you can see it here, V1. Um, and I'm guessing it's going to be. inserted from this side because we've got I mean, all the surface mount stuff thing seems to be on the back and that's the only way you're going to solder that one so I'll put it in this way round. And there is a crude shape on this diagram you see that crude shape that does look like the outline of that package so we're going to go with that now I've got an option here of using again paste 
versus regular solder. But just to show you, you can use paste on through hole if you want. Um, it can be handy if you are uh, trying to do something one handed, a bit like that. You saw I was doing it one handed. But really, you're going to use a lot of it. You might as well just use some regular stuff and not make such a mess because it's, it's a bit of a mess. There's a lot of flux on the board now that I've actually bridged, bridged a, a connection there. See there, there's a little bridge. Bugger, get off. Gear off. Too much solder there now. Pile of poo, but don't worry. If you've got those bridges, of course, you can just uh, get a bit of braid, get a bit of braid, do a bit of clean up. Solder sucker won't work on surface mount stuff, unfortunately, for obvious reasons. There's no holes to suck out. Okay, and then if you've got some nice side cutters, let's take care of that through hole there. Knock, knock. There, that's not looking too bad at all. Switch one, switch two, throw those in. A couple of little nice clicky tactile switches. Hmm, I think they've got uh, an orientation. <laughs> let's turn that one around. See if it fits any better in the hole. Yeah, it's not too bad. Now, annoyingly, I've got to kind of hold those because of the um, other components won't let this sit flat. But again, it's, it's an opportunity to show you the uh, solder paste technique. Um, just going to put it on these two here, and just I'm, I'm not worried about making a really good joint. I just want a joint enough to sort of tack them. So that's pretty much just tacks now. They're not going to fall out, go anywhere. Get that one, make sure that's nice and down. Um, and then I can just use the regular solder wire and dash those on. Of course, starting with the legs that I didn't solder, otherwise I just fall straight back out again. Ah, got a bridge again, bloody hell. Oh, they're, they're actually, looking at the circuit, they're joined in that point part, so don't worry about that if they bridge over in that middle bit. Gonna ignore that. Again, that's the danger sometimes of these solder masks. They're not quite right. You will get that happening, but pretty easy to rectify. Okay, so we've got those in. Not sure what this big square thing is for. Huh. Is it for this? Yeah, that could be it. That could be it indeed. Just going to try to get this part in, which is the, uh, the headphone socket. It does have a um, some notches in, but they don't seem to work. I'm just going to put it in back to front just to see. Yeah, they don't align back to front either, so that's not the mistake. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's going to need the uh, little locating pins to be nomped off there. Get them off. Now this board is bloody sticky. Plenty of flux all over it now. Again, the dangers of paste. As the paste contains basically tiny beads of solder that are um, floating, they're pretty much just floating in um, flux, you, you're, you really can't stop loads of flux getting everywhere. <clears throat> okay, that's that in. I'm just going by now what I think looks like fun to put in, and I think this switch is fun. If you look at the back while I turn it, I'm just going to hook something up so we can turn it. It's actually an on-off switch and a volume. So that's in its off state, and you'll see here there's actually a tiny switch. And then as you rotate the volume, you can hear a click, and that switch closes. And that means there's power going through that part. 
and then these pins are the potentiometer pins. So you've got these two outer ones are the power, the current flowing through for power, and these three middle pins are going to be carrying the, uh, the potentiometer voltage uh, for the basically going to be the volume, isn't it? I'm just going to plop some down on there. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. And I think this looks like it's a little bit bit long so I'm just going to chop off the excess now before I solder it down there like just like that not too bad just going to make sure it's nicely pushed through and this just solder it all down a bit of sturdy sturdy soldering required here Ow! Actually, bit myself then. Mmm, I smell bacon. Put that there. Put that there. And this one didn't quite, I don't know, a bit of dirt on there just wasn't quite sitting, but it is now. Fine. Put the uh, knob on. That's good, but I don't like how it's uh, actually ended up sitting. It's a bit, a bit of an angle there, but I think it'll. Yeah, that's it. That's looking all right now. Fine. Got our LED. Should we put, pop our little LED in? That looks like something that we can manage. Where's LED on our diagram? suspect it could be V2 and it is V2 there and that will go just like so and I'm aware there's some of those three legged components surface mount ones that are still too fit in fact just either side of that LET so now might be a good time to fit those I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and work out what V3 and V4 actually do. And it's, I think it's these two. I'm just going to look on the uh, diagram again. Ow. V4 is a PNP and V3 is an MPN. So they're just transistors. Um, I'm just going to use the opportunity just to show you what I do every now and then. A bit of, uh, you know, hand cleaner gel. Just rub that on the old tools and then wipe that all down and that should uh, dissolve the flux and uh, make it a bit liquid so you can then wipe it on the rag and then it'll reduce your stickiness. But make sure you wipe it off, it's, it won't like do anything unless you wipe it off. So this is marked, it looks like a 2T1 and this one is marked a J6 so I'm going to have to probably look those up so we'll leave those for now. Let's see if there's anything I can fit without having to look look things up because that does kill a lot of time doing the old lookups. So we've got some resistors here. <clears throat> now I have ordered a component tester, one of those really cheap but snazzy looking component testers. And uh, it hasn't arrived yet, but I expect it could even arrive later today. That would be fun. Help with these. Point six ohms. 0.6 ohms, that's an interesting one. And a, a 6.74, okay, so let's find those footprints. So R5 is a 6.81, I've got the diagram just in front of me. R5 is a, and it's coming in from this side, R5, there we go. Pop that straight in. What was the other one? Mm, probably there. Something going across the. Uh, it does. What? 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 Wait, what? There does seem to be a resistor footprint across there. 
probably ought to have popped those components in there and maybe a jumper that's coming from there there. Yeah. Let me get this resistor in first. There's a bit of fiddliness. I mean that's quite annoying how they've done that. And uh, I might end up mounting some components on the other side of the board for that. Let's just get this resistor in. Let's get the easy stuff done for now and worry about the other part stuff later. Otherwise you're never going to do anything. You just spend all your time on the internet trying to look up videos of people building this kit, I suspect. And uh, if they're like me, you'll get so far and then you'll say, oh, and they don't even know what they're bloody doing. And you'll get stuck again. Right, so I'm going to measure this resistor again because <clears throat> it's one of those odd values that I'm looking at a picture here and I'm seeing a 50... 50 oh hang on okay so that was we think 0.7 ohms or some really I think I don't know if you need a jumper across here where it says J1 or not probably but then they've got a pic picture here of a resistor and stuff I wonder if that's just describing you see here I think it's maybe just describing this potentiometer here. So if that's the case, we do have that rather small resistor, but it doesn't look like it necessarily has a home. It's all very it's all very strange. So I could I could see there's some sort of queries on some forums and things about this and uh, yeah, I do. I do see where people are are coming from on this, where they sort of start to get confused. Because I'm I'm getting confused with it. Again, leave that leave that those components to the end. The, as soon as you get stuck, just keep going. C sixteen is three three two. We can get that capacitor in there. Three three two. C seventeen. C seventeen is also a three three two. Ah, but I've only got one three three two. And I've got a 223. Mm -hmm. But we also have this electrolytic capacitor, which is rated at 100 microfarads. Where is the 100 microfarad resist uh, capacitor in this drawing? C18. C18, eh? Hey? Well, we know it exists in the drawing, but I'm darned if I can see it anywhere here. C18. Hmm. Okay, tell you what, maybe it's time for a little jump cut and me to have a little dig around, measure these things, and I'll get back to you because. I think we're getting to the realms here of uh, of where it's just pure guesswork and uh, I don't really feel comfortable just trying to guess now at this point. I'm back. I actually have, I, I know you're going to get annoyed, some of you at home, but I did race away and uh, complete some of the other components. Um, now using various sources, I'm going to say I didn't find any particular instructions on this, but I did see images, and some of the images are different versions of the PCB, so might not work. But basically that low value resistor is being used as an inductor, so that plops into that point there. You've got the two capacitors here, which I think was C17 and C... Uh, looks like a 19. The 17, this one here is a 332, and the one behind it is the 223. We have our little resistor in there. We've got our NPN transistor. Sorry, our electrolytic capacitor actually goes in that footprint there. Uh, I forget. I think it was C18. And uh, just make sure the negative is that side, pointing away from the board. Also, you might just see here jumper 2. Make sure you put a jumper in across there, a bit of wire. In fact, I've put two. You can see they're soldered together there in the middle. And then you do need a jumper across here. So what I've yet to install is this inductor into here. 
and these two surface mount things. Before I do the inductor, because it's a bit fiddly, I think we'll just get the surface mount out of the way. And you remember earlier there was one component is a J6, and I'm struggling. That one's the J6. The J6 is the NPN transistor. So looking at the circuit diagram, that means it's this one here, this, um, oh, no, it doesn't. It's a uh, V4. Sorry, I'm just getting a bit bonkers there, V4. So V4 is right there. No, am I, I'm losing my mind now. No, it's V3. Bloody hell, what's going on with my brain today? I'm, that's NPN. 100% sure that's NPN. Sorry, you can still hear I've got this uh, this cold here. V3, put J6 on V3. Um, it's uh, really affecting me, it really is. Man flu is real, I can assure you. And it's malingering. No longer can I just brush these things off. They just hang around for ages. So this is J6 now. And I'm going to be fitting J6 to V3. Yes, I think that's the final, my final answer. J6 to V3. And uh, yeah, if I've got that wrong, I do apologise. I can't hear you shouting at the screen, of course, because um, I made this video probably yesterday. But we're going to rattle through. We're going to get through it, you and me. Let's not worry. Well, it doesn't look like it's very hard to debug. There's only a million places on here where we could have gone wrong. Nice. That's in. That's a good one. Right, next one, V4. And while I'm, while I'm peeling it out of its wrappings, I'm also sort of casting my eye onto the board. Look at that bloody thing, so short. Sticky board though, before I power it up, I must make sure I rinse this board down with some PCB cleaner. But it does look like most of the uh, different spots on the PCB are actually filled. We don't have too many vacancies, and that's always good when you're making a kit. Let's get this. Oh, we did have that resistor though. I have neglected, haven't I? I did forget all about that strange, strange resistor you recall the one on the that one R2 so I'm gonna to have to go back and do R2 at some point as well find a suitable value for R2 in my box of RRs it does make me worry that there could have been a substitution a manufacturer substitution there that's in now this looks like a bugger the reason being they have Hit varnished wires basically. I'm going to try to show you. The camera's going to have a bit of trouble focusing on that, but they're very tiny wires and they generally are varnished, which means. Urgh, I do apologise if it's out of focus, but I can't do the two things at once in this case. I'll leave it by that damp looking blob, which means you have to melt the varnish off before you can solder it. But sometimes, if you're lucky, this heat, heat alone will be enough. So I'm just going to hold the iron on the end it looks it looks tinned it looks tinned you, you'll probably just see it there'll be a point where that varnish will bubble um, can't show you that microscope but it does and you'll get there don't worry just keep the heat on it a bit it will be absolutely fine so I'm just gonna poke it through it's really First time I uh, came across this sort of technology, here's a fun fact for you, is making, I was making a jewel thief, and that was one of BigClive.com's jewel thieves, thieves, but that he had on his website, and that was before, before the days of YouTube, um, and I remember emailing BigClive about that, um, and it's... I've still got the materials I bought for that, which is a big roll of the um, big roll of that uh, wire, basically. And I had a big bag of those inductors from RS or ferrites rather from RS. And uh, yeah, that was all back in dear. Just looking at the circuit diagram, because there seems to be a slight bridge here between the C the, that L1 we've just put down and C14 and. 
can't tell if they're supposed to be connected. So we'll have a look here. Uh, I know you can only see a little bit at a time. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to clean that. I think it's the easiest way. And just see if there's... Mm -hmm. Where did I put it? Here. <laughs> I think they're all the same... Yeah, they're all on the same bit of track. That's why it's just bridged over again. That not great, but not totally crap. Um, solder resist. So we've got plus and minus wires now to solder in. And I'm just going to solder them straight on the back. I'm not going to bother putting them through hole. I think we'll be okay there. And plus, what's this side? And the minus was this side. And if they're going to go to the battery snap things here, the positive is usually that boy, and the negative is obviously the opposite one of that. There we go. Oops. So apart from that one resistor, which is the odd one, I'm almost tempted just to plop that on there. Um, but I will have a quick look. I've got a little it's under my Tari ST, unfortunately, but I do have a book of resistors. Ooh, let's get them out. Show you what they look like. They look like these. And we were looking for 150 ohms, if I recall. So these are all in the K range, so that's no good. <laughs> and these are all in the uh, K range as well. Huge K range. Bugger. Not so useful for me today. Okay, fair enough. I thought I had a, a broader selection. Should we just go for broke and just chuck that one in? Let's just, just chuck that one in. I might even put it in upside down so I can identify it easier. I mean, focus. We'll see. It might affect the volume or something seems to be hanging around that part. So I'm going to put it upside down. It will be the white faced component. Oops. Ah, my iron is stuck. There we go. Good. So just a quick wash of the board. Let me just have a look and see what I've got. What have we got to clean? Label remover? No. Conformal coating? Definitely not. Ah, some flux clean. This is pretty good stuff, actually. I do like the old flux clean. Just gonna put on this bit of rag. There's something wrong with this nozzle on this bottle, though. Actually, when you squirt it, more of it comes out the top of the nozzle than the actual brush bit. It can be a bit tedious, but that's fine. Not going to give it the massive full full Monty wash. I think it's uh, it's, it's probably all right. I don't know what I did with my amazing brush. If you remember, I used to have a little uh, a little brush here. Crikey! I just found this brush and see how that edge is all melted. I've got a lot of solvents and stuff here spilt on the desk. One day I ought to clean those before they etch themselves into everything. Okay, so that board isn't particularly clean actually, but I think it, at least it's free from solder beads. So I guess I could test this now. I, I, I could fit it all up and test it, but I feel maybe it's a good idea just to put the bench power supply on it. I'm going to rang that down to three, let's let's call it 2.9. Good enough. We actually have power. I'm just going to turn the power off right now. I want to plug the headphones in. 
<laughs> my clips are really knackered. Time to sort the clips, I think. Nice. So that was in briefly, and now it's not. And then it will be when I bend the clip back. Good. Now we have some clips. I'm going to put the headphones in. Mm, great. Power on. Okay. Ooh. No current being used. So far, off to a bad start. I'm just going to have a little listen in here. Yeah, we have nothing. That's not good, is it? Right, so I've uh, trying to debug this. So I just want to show you what I've done. I've replaced that component there with two resistors. That will divide by two and give us hopefully the correct value. If you remember, that was the, ooh, meant to be 154 ohms. So I've sort of substituted those. I had to change the LED because the LED wasn't lighting up. But now look. Ooh, ooh, but that's as far as it goes in terms of operation. I can't get any sound at all out of this. Um, so I'm kind of, I, I know you might be disappointed watching this because you were saying, Andrew, you're, you've led us on a merry dance through your whole construction process, yet you've not um, finished this because you haven't finished debugging it. Um, absolutely correct. Now where I'm struggling, I'm struggling to hear any sound at all out of the speaker. Not even a pop or a click or a wheeze. So that's the odd part. So looking at the diagram here, the speakers are connected into in this part here of the circuit. And that's where all those focus transistors were. So I suspect they were acting as a sort of rudimentary amplifier. But I'm getting nothing. I mean, nothing at all out of that. So it's a very, it's very odd. So it's sort of gone through the board. Had a little check um, in this sort of region here. This is the basic V3, V4. If you remember our NPN, PNP confusion earlier. Um, but that's about it. I can't hear anything. I mean, I'm just going to put a bit of the voltmeter on the board, and this is. Pretty much turned up to the what would be the full volume, and I'll just crank that up. Full whack now, it's at full whack, and I'm not just not seeing anything. I know mean, it's only in the millivolt range, but there's absolutely nothing going on. So yeah, I don't know. I might have to have a, a quick look through some of these these forums. I mean, just noticing on the bottom here, you know, we do have a hole here and we do have a hole here, so I'm not sure. Mm, I think, though, they're just generic holes, you know, they're not actually got any components marked up on the top for those. In fact, it's hard to somehow see where they are. This one's actually underneath the tax switch. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I think I'll just carry on, though. I think. Let's just pop it in its box and everything. I think I'll have to come back to it. And there's, it's not going to be good to come back to it in this state, is it? Because I'm not going to want to deal with it. So let's put these little buttons. Got some buttons in here. Let's pop those in. And it's got this thing, which will sit. I think it sits on through the other side. So we we'll just leave that in off for now. And that is how. Effectively, this will go. Let's have a check of that. Yeah, it looks alright. Our power, the LED, if you're making this, look, leave your LED leg pretty long because <laughs> that's the hole for the LED and that's the LED. So I think you're, it's designed to be left quite long so you can poke it through that hole. But I'm not going to worry about that now. It's not working, so... <laughs> No, no point uh, working, putting too much effort into it at the moment. So that's good. So that's fine. It's fine and dandy. So I think we need to put. There's three screws I can see. So 
The case has two screw holes, so I'm going to require you to put in, I think, one of these screws at least. And there's no, no washers, and they're pretty tight fit. So it's like self tappers. I'm just going to hold that in. Crikey! That is some force. I'm just looking there. There is one shorter screw. There's one machine screw, which is for the volume knob, and there's two self tappers, and one of them is ever so slightly shorter. I suspect put the ever so slightly shorter one through the board. What? It's what a shame. Now, now how am I going to listen to my FM radio? It's not going to satisfy my FM radio needs. I can't even remember the last time I used an FM radio, can you? So that's the positive, goes on that outer one. The negative, go on that inner one. It's all good, all good in the hood. Um, bit of wire routing malarkey needed. Just gonna poke it. It's my fault, of course, if you remember that negative wire. I kind of messed around with it a bit. And if you're putting a bit of effort into it, you can probably get it to clear. Have a nice clear battery bay, but I'm not going to put that effort into it. So I'm going to leave those ones right there where I can see them. I don't trust them. I'm going to have them where I can see them. Ah, poop. I forgot to do the other end. So that's the other end of the battery bay. So that's how it should go. Spring there, spring on the inner face. Spring on your inner face. Let's just see if there's a way that you can do the battery wires neat. I'm just gonna fold them in underneath there. Yeah, I think that's how you can do that. Urgh. Pretty crunchy though, I have to admit. I think there's just an ever slight bit of pressure. PCBs, just a tiny bit where it shouldn't be. But you can sit there with a little Stanley knife or something and whittle this down to your needs. And I've got, I can just spy across the table a couple of batteries. We might pop those in as well while we're at it. There we go. Um, yeah, looks like it needs, it's weird, it's, yeah, it's definitely a triple A. <laughs> it's not great, it's not a great triple A battery bay, but it, it does the job, doesn't it? Just the job. That's good. And I can see our little, uh, red LED in there. There's our power wire, we want that on the side, pop that in, that's the little hat. It is keyed, so I'm going to turn it off, so you can see that's keyed that way, that's that's where we want it, see the keyway? When it's off you want it pointing down, because that would be, that will seem normal to your brain when you're using this. And snap that lid on, ooh, nice. Gonna pop that in. What happened to our, oh, our LED went off? There we go. The batteries went a bit tonto. You might want to put a bit of foam in there. And that's it. I'm just gonna have a little listeny listen. Oh, I thought I thought I imagined I heard something, but I think it really was just my imagination running wild there. This volume bit's a bit stiff. Nah, just imagining it. Just imagining it. But there you go. So that's the radio kit, not debugged. That's so I've got as far as not debugging it. But hopefully if you've made one, you might be able to comment down below and let me know what you think I should try to do. Um, but I hope that's helped you somewhat in the kit. If there's any major issues, please read the description down below in case I've sort of corrected corrected this and figured out what it is. So always check back in the description and maybe the comments. Maybe someone's got some corrections before you follow my advice blindly and make it wrong. So thank you for watching.